Hello again everyone and welcome. I'm Jamaican Youth and in this video I'll be talking to you about visiting Cuba. I'll be talking to you about the do's and don'ts of visiting Cuba. So I recently had the opportunity to visit Cuba and there were some things I discovered that I think you should know before you go to Cuba if you ever decide to visit. So before I get into that I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so as it helps the channel to grow and I'd like to ask you to hit the like button as it pushes the video out to more eyes that may want to see this information or hear this information just like you may. So I'm going to give you a moment to do that. So without further ado, here are my do's and don'ts of visiting Cuba. I will start with my don'ts first. So when visiting Cuba, do not go to Cuba without cash. So yes, you will need cash before you go to Cuba. And I mean you will need to withdraw your cash in your country of origin and take it with you to Cuba to exchange it in Cuba. So for example, if you're leaving from the United States going to Cuba, you will need to take your currency with you from the United States and take it with you into Cuba. And the reason why this is, is because there will not be a lot of ATMs around for you to withdraw cash. Once you are in Cuba, once you leave the airport, all the cash you have is all the cash you will be able to use and you may not be able to get to use any other currency after you use this amount. No, you can get currency from the airport. I've never done that, so maybe you can go back to the airport and get currency. However, if you're not planning on going back to the airport before you leave, the currency that you have with you while you're in Cuba is the only currency that you will have. In addition to that, having a debit card and a credit card, if it's a US debit card and credit card will not work in Cuba. So you will not be able to use your cards if you're an American. Maybe if you're, from a, a, you're using a card from a different country, it may be able to work, but if you're using American cards, it will not be able to work. So make sure you have all of your currency that you want to use. So, and that, that means that you will have to do a lot of research before you do that. Take the currency with you as getting currency in Cuba is challenging if you don't have cash. Number two, do not go to Cuba without doing a lot of research on everything that you would like to do. It is important that you research what you'd like to do. Whether it is that you want to go on a tour, you want to go to a beach, you want to do a walking tour, uh, you want to take the bus to somewhere to another city, it is extremely important that you, you research that extensively as sometimes getting information when you're in Cuba can be difficult. And maybe you will say, oh, well, maybe if I can't get information, I can just look it up on the internet. The internet situation here in Cuba is also challenging as sometimes the internet just doesn't work. It's down for a while, it comes up, and even when it comes up, it can be a little slow, depending on where you are. I stayed at an Airbnb that had internet, um, and the internet was decent. However, there were times when it was just not working or times when it was really slow. So it's best for you to research everything that you would like to do before you come. Not only because of the internet situation, but also because if, for example, you're trying to buy a bus ticket, you're trying to go to another city, typically to buy a bus ticket, you will need to buy it at the bus station or online, which sometimes may or may not work, but even if you do buy it online, you'll still have to come to the bus station and get that verified, and that has to be done online. If you are in a situation like what happened to me, where I went to the bus station and I wanted to buy a ticket to go to another city, but the internet was down, 
there was I just couldn't do it anymore there was no manual way of purchasing the ticket everything had to be online and because the internet was down it I couldn't purchase it and so I couldn't go to where I wanted to go for that day and so I ended up having to hang around waiting until the the ticket uh, the internet was up um, I really came back another day and then purchased the ticket um, to go somewhere so it is important that you research 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 everything you want to do and that should really be for any country you visit but especially Cuba because getting the information while you're on the ground may be a, a big challenge so make sure that you research what you're doing number three do not take currency from the first person that offers to sell you the currency the local currency so don't just go and the first person that comes and offers the silly currency just take it from them no that sounds like it should be normal yes however what you want to do the, the Cuban currency fluctuates a lot so you pretty much kinda have to try and get the best price that you can get so for example I got one I got my currency for one US dollar to 165 Cuban pesos however there were persons selling it for 140 Cuban pesos and so it was by process of elimination that I was able to get the best um, bang for my buck and in Cuba also the in terms of buying currency you don't necessarily always have to buy it at the bank because the locals sell the currency and I know typically in other countries I wouldn't buy you know currency from the locals because it just doesn't seem you know upfront however that is the situation in Cuba you can buy um, currency from the locals if you're comfortable of course if you're not comfortable doing that then um, you can also always buy from someone else but for me I was able to buy from my Airbnb host and it was a good deal so um, you know it, it, it it's something to think about whenever you are in Cuba as it will not be the same situation as it is in other countries where you can just bank on getting from the ATM or buying the currency at the bank so do not just buy from the first person that uh, you, you that comes to try and sell you um, currency number four do not say that you're visiting Cuba as a tourist whenever you're visiting Cuba especially if you're an American as you know as a uh, Americans are not allowed to visit Cuba as tourists and so it is important that whenever you are asked why is it that you're visiting Cuba you should say I'm visiting to support the Cuban people that is what you should say and of course when you're filling out the information to go to Cuba it will ask what is your reason for visiting Cuba and that should be your reason to support the Cuban people how are you supporting the Cuban people in terms of supporting them by engaging the culture by engaging accommodation by engaging the, the products of the Cuban people you're supporting them by by purchasing products um, of the Cuban people so those are some of the language that's some of the language you want to use when talking about the reasons why you're visiting Cuba especially as an American if you're visiting from other countries it may be different um, if depending on the relationship that your country has with Cuba that may not necessarily be something that you will have to say you could say you're visiting as a tourist number five number four number five um, you do not film the police if you're filming do not film the police um, this is something that I read ahead of time but I also discovered it while I was there I was doing a little filming while I was there in Havana and I happened to my camera caught the police I wasn't really trying to film the police but he just so happened to be in the you know shot of the camera and he saw the camera and he came over and was like you are not allowed to do that and that's okay um, you know it, he never really made a big deal out of it he just stopped me from filming and I just cut the camera there and kept it pushing and filmed the other things so just remember you're not allowed 
to film the police in Cuba. Then finally, do not go to Cuba without changing your VPN. Your VPN on your phone, it's going to be very important that you change that. And the reason for that is that if you want to access your U.S. bank account to see if there, your, your balance is there or to see if there's been a transaction with the money coming out or money coming in, you're not going to be able to do that with, with uh, Cuban Wi-Fi or with Cuban Internet. And so the way to work around that is to change your VPN. You can change your VPN before you get to Cuba. You can also change it while you're in Cuba as well. But make sure you change your VPN um, when you're there and change it to a country that's not in the United States or Cuba. I guess maybe you could change it to the US as well so that you can actually see um, your US account because when you're in Cuba with Cuban internet you're not going to be able to see your account and you know if that is something that you need to access you you want to do that um, and so you know, there are financial reasons why you might want to do that. Remember, your debit cards and your credit cards don't work there. But if, for example, you need to pay for something that you can't pay um, online with a credit card, let's say you need to book a hotel, you're not going to be able to upload a Cuban, your American card to a Cuban hotel if you're going to pay it online. So if you change your VPN to uh, an American uh, VPN or to somewhere outside the US, you will be able to pay that way. But if you're using just Cuban internet where it's, you know, you're not going to be able to use your, your, your card. So those are things that you probably want to think about um, to be prepared to be there. Because if you do not have enough cash and you run out of cash in Cuba, you're going to have a problem there. You know, you may have to go back to the airport to get um, currency or, you know, you may not be able to. It, it's, it's going to be challenging for you. So just think about changing your VPN or having a VPN changer thing on your phone so that you can change your VPN when you're in Cuba um, so that, you know, you, you, you're able to access your money, your funds and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. So those are my don'ts of Cuba but let's talk about the do's some things that you should do while you're in Cuba number one visit Varadero Beach I think that Varadero Beach is the best closest beach to Havana and I'm saying this assuming that you're flying into to Havana I mean some people fly into uh, Santiago but I'm talking about if you're in Havana visit Varadero Beach. It's the best closest beach to Havana. There are some closer beaches um, in Havana or you know right outside Havana. You can leave Havana and, and get to some closer beach but those are not the best beaches. The better ones are in, in Varadero and you can get to Varadero by taking a bus or a taxi. Of course taking a taxi is going to be significantly more expensive because Varadero is at least two two and a half hours, two and a quarter, two and a half hours away from um, Havana. So if you take a bus, it's going to be a little bit longer, but it's going to be significantly cheaper than if you take a cab or taxi. It's going to be faster, but you're going to pay significantly more. And if you're traveling on a budget like I was, I want the most cost effective method of getting around. And so I definitely did use the bus and got to Varadero and it was a pretty nice experience you know there are some resorts there as well so if you want to stay at um, hotels if you want to stay at um, you know Airbnbs those accommodations are there as well so I recommend that Varadero Beach is one place that you visit number two do a walking tour of Old Town Havana and the Hotel Inglaterra area. So Old Town Havana in general, Hotel Inglaterra is in Old Town Havana. But do a walking tour of there. Old Town Havana has nice architecture, you know, really 
nice colonial architecture um, you know you will see some really nice buildings there the Hotel Inglaterra area you will see the Capitol building you know um, and you'll also see where the classic car tour begins that's right where the Hotel Inglaterra area is um, it's it's really nice to do that walking tour to see Old Town Havana it gives you that Latin American slash European vibe um, because when you get outside of Havana it tends to be a little different it tends to feel like a little a little more Caribbean a little bit more of a Caribbean feel outside of Havana but in Havana it gives you that Latin America slash European type feel so do a walking tour of Old Town Havana um, and you know look around you'll see Hotel Inglaterra you'll see the classic car and you know you will you will you will get the the whole ambience of um, Havana number three that leads me to number three do a classic car tour the classic car tour is one of the iconic things that you can do when you're in Havana when you visit Cuba um, the classic car tour is essentially a tour where you pay for a driver to drive your own in a classic American vehicle around Havana where you can pretty much stop and take pictures and so on and so forth. Depending on how long you want the tour to be will determine the price. But you're going to be paying anywhere from $50 up to $70. So the classic car tour is very interesting. Um, you know, as some of you may know, in Cuba, there are not a lot of modern vehicles there. There are lots of American cars, classic American cars from the 1950s, 60s that are still used in Cuba. So it's like going back in time to some extent. But some of those cars are very well kept, very well uh, maintained, and so they are nice looking, you know, and so if you do a tour in it, it could be a nice experience but I also want to mention that there is another option of doing the same tour but with the Havana bus store or Havana bus store it's a double-decker bus where you have the up, upper level and lower level where you sit in the bus and it essentially does the same tour that the classic car tour does however it's at a much cheaper cost and of course you're doing it with a, a lot of other people who are touring as well um, the cost for that is about, I think it was about $11, I don't think it's more than 11 US dollars. So if you compare 11 US dollars to, um, if you do the bus tour versus 50 to 70 US dollars if you do the, um, the classic car tour. So I personally did the, the uh, bus tour because, you know, I was traveling on a budget again and, you know, the, the difference between the two though is that, or another difference between the two is that the, the bus tour, you are not able to come out and take pictures and do all of that and then hop onto the bus. Because it's just one tour all the way through. However, a nice perk about the bus tour is that you, whenever you buy a ticket for the day for the bus tour, you, you can use the bus for the entire day. So I think the bus runs on a schedule. I think it runs every hour or every hour and a half or something like that. So if, for example, you're on the tour and you're driving around and you see a place that you'd like to hop off the bus and explore, you can hop off the bus, explore it for as long as you want. Maybe let's say you want to explore it for, for an hour. And then in another hour to an hour and a half, another bus will come around and you can hop back on that bus and complete the tour without purchasing another ticket. So you can use that one ticket for the entire tour. So those are options to get that the, 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 both the classic car tour and the, the bus tour. You can get the, the beginning of the tour right in front of Hotel Inglaterra. So you notice how much times I'm saying Hotel in Inglaterra because it's one of the iconic places in Old Town Havana and it's where the tour starts. It's where you'll see the Capitol building as well. So try to, to do that as well. Number three, third thing that you can do is go to Vinales and do the tobacco tour and the horseback riding tour. That is something that is very good. Vinales is west of 
Havana, if I'm not mistaken. Whereas Veradero Beach is east of Havana. So it's in a completely different direction. However, just like going to Veradero, you can take a taxi or a bus. You can also take a taxi or a bus to go to Vinales. Unfortunately for me, I, I never got to go to Vinales because, as I was explaining earlier, when I went to the bus station, the internet was down and I couldn't buy my ticket at that time. And so I had to wait and come back pretty much another day. And so that day was gone. I couldn't use that day anymore. So I had to come back another day and did something else. So um, I didn't get to go there and I was on a time crunch also. So I wasn't able to do every th single thing I set out to do. But that was because the internet was down. But if you get the chance to go to Vinales, do the horseback riding and do the tobacco um, tour. I'm not a tobacco person per se. However, I find it, I would find it interesting to see, you know, how the Cuban cigar is made. I'm sure you have all heard of the Cuban cigar before and what that is. So I wanted to see how they grow it, how they make it in person. So, you know, that was, that is something I think um, would be good for you to do. And then, you know, finally, and I kind of mentioned this early, make sure you book everything in advance before you get to Cuba to the best that you can. So if you know that you're going to be traveling by bus to go to somewhere, buy the ticket online if you can. And it will it will require a lot of research, you know. Um, you you, you the, 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 the bus company there, I think is uh, Viva, I think it is, that goes to everywhere in, in Cuba that you can take the bus. Do as much research as you possibly can. If you know you, you if you plan out your your trip, that on day one I'm gonna do this, day two I'm gonna do that, day three, and so on and so forth, plan it out like that. And make sure that you 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 know purchase everything if you're buying tickets. Buy that online if you can. Buy it ahead of time. It will suffice. It will be very good for you, and it will help you enjoy your trip a little bit better. Um, these were some of the things I didn't do while I was in before I went to Cuba, and there were some days I would have to say was wasted. Um, because there were some things I wanted to do, do that I couldn't do because I couldn't find the information or the internet was down so I couldn't look for the information and when I did find the information I went to the bus station the internet was down there and so on and so forth so you know if I had planned a little bit better it could have been it could have turned out a little bit um, you know more I, I could have done everything that I wanted to do I still did most of what I wanted to do but not necessarily always in the way I wanted to do it. Um, and so research and planning ahead is pretty, pretty important. So all in all, I mean, Cuba is a very beautiful country, very beautiful people, very um, friendly people as well, and accommodating. Um, so you will definitely enjoy it. You know, just walking around Old Town Havana was a really nice experience for me. Um, you know, and then going to Varadero and, and you know, going to some of the different places I went to. I went on a, a, a ferry to go over to Casablanca. That's another thing that you can do. Going over to Casablanca from the, the main part of, from Old Town Havana over to Casablanca where they have a statue of Jesus, something similar to, to, to um, what you see in, um, in uh, Rio de Janeiro, the statue of Jesus. And also over in Casablanca, they, they have a house, the house that Che Guevara used to live in. And if, 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 if you don't know the story of Che Guevara and, and his, you know, his relevance in, in, um, in Latin America, you need to read about that. But, but in particular in, in, in Cuba, um, he's very, very well respected, highly respected, and I got to do a whole tour of che, che Guevara's house and all of that. So those are some things that you can do. I talk about the things that talked about the things that you shouldn't do. Um, I hope this helps to prepare you to go to Cuba um, whenever you make the decision to do that. I think it's somewhere that you should visit um, and see what it's like. Um, 
you know, I, I just my experience there, what I saw, I, I often wondered, I wonder what Cuba would have been like hadn't they had their embargo because it still is a very beautiful country um, just looking around still very well built up but you know you can also see the lack of development um, in Cuba as well so it's it's very very interesting um, it's something I've always wanted to, to do I'm from Jamaica Cuba is 90 miles away from Jamaica we are neighbors and I had never been to Jamaica before uh, never been to Cuba before so it's something I really wanted to do and really enjoyed um, doing while I was there. So I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you'll take something with you. And when you go to, to Cuba, you see something that you didn't, I didn't mention here that you think, you know, um, needs to be mentioned. Feel free to share it. Feel free to share some of your comments. Um, if you're somebody that has visited Cuba before and you know um there are things that you'd like to share feel free to share this in the comment section below um, but thank you for watching this video and until next time there's more to the world than where you live have a good day everyone